this has got to be my favourite time of the day. It's a beautiful sunset, a clear sky, the first stars are just appearing, and it's time to test out my homemade star tracker. Hello and a warm welcome to the Refreshing Views Observatory where we love observing the night sky. My name is Mark Radici and this week I'm setting up my homemade affordable star tracker for some wide field astrophotography. I'll describe my setup process and some tips to help us on this journey. So this mount I showed you last week is designed to track the stars so that we can take long duration pictures of the night sky without the stars trailing as the earth rotates. Now you can either get your credit card out and buy a tracker or make one and this one only costs around £50 or so including the offcut supply word and various odds and ends I had lying around. And to my surprise it works really well using a Canon 77D and 50mm nifty 50 lens. So here it is early this week under the near full moon looking at the beautiful constellation of Lyra for firstly one minute without the tracking and then I turn the tracking on. So you can see we have a clear benefit as we now take longer duration pictures. So here is the constellation of Cygnus, this time for 30 seconds, again without tracking, and then with the tracking turned on. But when I zoomed in, there was still some, some residual trailing, although you do have to zoom in to see it. So since I finished making it, the weather has turned truly awful. We've had loads of rain, loads of hard showers. So I used the time to check two things. Firstly, that I was really tracking at this ideal rate of 15 degrees per hour or one degree every four minutes and then checked that the small finder scope was truly aligned with the hinge. So what we need to do to make sure we're polar aligned is make sure that the finder scope on the side of the tracker is lined up accurately with the hinge. So what I've done is I've put my smartphone looking down through the finder scope so you can see what I'm looking at and I've come up to the top of the garden and I'm now lined up with a tree be about two or three miles distance, a couple of miles distance at the most, over there. And if I rotate the hinge, the crosshairs by and large still remain lined up with that tree. So the rain has finally cleared and although it's nearly the full moon, I decided to observe anyway and use it as a practice session for when we have dark skies again. So the first thing I did was polar align. I pointed the tripod due north and made sure that the legs are clamped really tight so they don't move. Now to find the north pole we line up the hinge with Polaris. Now we find Polaris by using the two end stars of the plough or the big dipper that point towards Polaris. I then squint on the sighting tube so I have Polaris centred on the hinge and then fine tune the alignments using the finder scope I line during the day. And then I line up with where the north pole is, north celestial pole is using the chart in Sky Safari or whatever planetary map you choose. Then tighten the tripod head down really tight so it doesn't move during the night and definitely don't kick the tripod and don't ask me how I know that. So I'm now going to set up this little guy, my, my intervalometer. You can buy these online, they're quite cheap. You can also get quite expensive models as well but being me I went for a cheap model and this fires the camera shutter so you get vibration free images you're not manually pressing the buttons so it's so simple even I can use it so let's start her up so press the set button and the delay is how long you want to delay from when you press start so I set it for five seconds that's hours minutes seconds so I set it for five seconds just to let the vibrations die down the long is how long you want the exposure for. In this case, I set it for 30 seconds. And then the interval is the time between the shots. So I've set this at five seconds. You could make this one second. N is the number of images you want. You could have that at, well, in this case, it's 399, or you can have unlimited, or you could have one, two, three, whatever you want. And lastly, there is a beep. So you can have it so you know it's working. But I turn that off just because it gets irritating. Oh, and the screen lights up as well so you can see it in the dark. So that's the intervalometer. Right, we'll set the camera to manual mode and I'm assuming you've got a battery charge, you've got a memory card in. Again, don't ask me how I know to do those. And we'll adjust the camera, adjust the ball head so it's pointing at a bright star. Switch it over to live view. And in this case, we are looking at Vega in the constellation of Lyra. Now I could use the moon, but it's behind the trees at the moment. 
Now if you can't see any stars, make sure you have a high ISO set and you're on bulb mode, or check your focus on the distant street light first. Manually adjust the focus, make sure you're on manual focus mode, so the stars are as small as possible, and suddenly a whole heap of faint stars appear when you're at perfect focus. So we're polar aligned, we focus the camera lens, we've got the intervalometer set up, we just need to use the ball head now to align with our target of interest, and then simply switch the tracking on and press start on the intervalometer. And now we can wait for images of deep space to roll into the camera. So here it is, and I'm amazed. This is a simple camera setup. It's on a homemade tracking mount. And here's a one minute of Cygnus. This is it with no tracking. And then if I turn the tracking on, now we should be able to see the Milky Way, but the moon is so bright tonight, it's not visible. I hardly need to use my head torch at all when I was packing up. So you can see the benefit with the tracking turned on. And again, we'll switch over to Lyra. And there it is with tracking. So I'm well chuffed to capture these wide field shots of the night sky and it's, it was an easy project to make so thoroughly recommended. I now just need to wait for some dark skies and clear skies and I can fire this up in anger. As always if you have any questions or comments then feel free to post them below and if you have time please do subscribe so I can bring you more videos as we explore the night sky. Stay safe and catch you next time.